everybody welcome to the hiking my feelings virtual campfire podcast my name is sydney williams i am your host and today i have one of my favorite musicians uh matt goodwin from i know him from the movement but i just want to like read through this bio real quick because i'm a sucker for a good bio so everybody like sit down grab a comfortable beverage we'll talk to matt in a second but like i want to share a little bit of story time and then we'll like back up questions about this bio because like this bio kind of blew my mind so Hi, everybody. Welcome to Storytime at Hacking My Feelings. Matt Goodwin is an American musician, composer, record producer, and engineer born in Naples, New York. He is best known for his contributions within the American reggae scene, having engineered and performed on not one, not two, not three, not four, but five albums that debuted number one on the Billboard and iTunes reggae charts. After studying classical piano for several years, at Ithaca College, he switched his focus and was later awarded the first ever undergraduate degree in ethnomusicology after studying music in Ghana, West Africa, and Jaipur, India, through the School for International Training. I have so many questions just about that alone. Like, this is going to be the longest interview of all time. Hope you have all day. When in Ghana in 2002, Matt worked with a producer to record the album, I'm going to butcher that, so we'll leave it, at Pigeon Music Studios in Accra with the international recording artist, De La Botry and Hewale Sounds, nailed it. Um, okay, I'm just gonna keep going. John Brown's Body, uh, Bedouin Sound Clash, Giant Panda Gorilla Dub Squad, Axis Armada, we're gonna talk about that, I found you on SoundCloud, hey. Um, and now the movement. It's a really long bio, we'll include it on the show notes. Matt, <laughs> who are you, where are you currently, and like, how did you land on this planet to bring all this wonderful music to the world? Tell me your story. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, thanks for all the, the great vibes. I'm super stoked to be on here and chat with you this morning. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's just me. I'm Matt Goodwin. I'm sitting here in my home in my basement, uh, I guess, basement studio in uh, Western New York in the Finger Lakes of New York, which is a, a stunningly beautiful region if you haven't been here. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up on the south end of this very small lake called Canandaigua Lake. Uh, and and all the beauty and everything has just like captivated me enough to stay here. So I actually live probably 20 minutes from my parents' house. They still live in the same home that I grew up in. Um, that's in like a small town called South Bristol. And it's overlooking that lake that I was speaking of, Canandaigua. And yeah, the Finger Lakes up here are just like, oh man, they're, they're, it's like the lifeblood. There's, there's a lot of great tales of uh, Native American tales of like actual creation hap starting on Bear Hill, which is the opposite side of the lake from me. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun. The, the, I don't know, it's like rejuvenating or something. I, I don't know exactly how to put it, but like I have just such a, a great community of people and friends like that are still childhood friends to this day. Um, and yeah, I've, I've like had the pleasure of traveling all over the world and I come back here and I'm just like, wow, this place is special. Um, that's, and that's, that speaks a lot to your connection to a specific place. Like for anybody that's watching this on YouTube behind me, I'm in a cottage at a retreat center called Mandala Springs that we're scouting for a retreat in the future. And this is Cherokee and uh, Muskogee land. And I walked, like we pulled into this place. This is like two hours North of San Francisco. You drive through wine country to get here. And we pulled in and I was like, these trees have stories like this land is sacred and like a publishing company owns this place. Like there's just, there's 10 meditation spots that are already mapped out on the facility map. Like it's just absolutely mesmerizing. And it sounds like to be able to go and study, I, I have questions about ethnomusicology. That is such a cool, like a term I hadn't even heard of or a degree that I knew existed. Yeah. Um, but having been all around the world and then to come back to the Finger Lakes region, do you have any stories of like, or memories of like your childhood where you were just like in nature and just completely consumed by the beautiful space that you're in? Cause like, you keep coming back to this place after being like all over the world. 
I'm curious, like, is there, a, are there standout memories that, that keep bringing you back or a feeling that you get when you go to a specific place around your area? Yeah. I mean, my whole childhood was really like submersed in nature. Um, Naples, New York, this small little town on the South end of this lake. It, it's really, it's like this quaint little town. There's no stoplights. There's, it's like, you know, there's like maybe one stop sign on Main Street there. And I graduated with, I think, 50 or 60 kids in my high school class. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Super small little town, but beautiful. And Naples is like really renowned for having uh, a lot of artists living in the area. But it'd just be like these people living in in cool like sheds up in the woods, like uh, glass blowers and metal sculptors and uh, amazing like Appalachian style fiddle players and um and yeah the whole appeal of this area is like there's these beautiful waterfalls there's i think three or four waterfalls in naples alone um beautiful hikes to go up to them and me and my buddy is like yeah we were pretty far from rochester which is the closest city to us and so we would just like we'd pack our bags and grab some tents and we'd go hike out into the middle of nowhere and that was like that was my most of my childhood we'd just be like sitting around a campfire yeah. not a virtual campfire but the real, <laughs> like <a> real thing <laughs> but the real thing and we'd have some instruments and we just hang and and jam and um you know and just like howl at the moon basically um and and then the lake itself there's also a ski area uh that's like just across the hill from me um man so many things that are just like mind-blowingly stunning in regards to nature yeah. So I just did a ton of outdoor activity. I mean, that's kind of what I was doing the whole time, even in my parents' house. So we live in this like small house and it's this really steep backyard. It, it then like sort of bottoms out for a second. And then it's like just a almost like cliff into a gully. Cool. But the cliff is like, yeah, and it's so rad. But, you know, as, as a kid, me and my brother always used to just like climb the vines down into the bottom of the gully. And if you take the gully, uh, the creek bed all the way down, it's like a mile or so. It goes over some wild mini waterfalls and drops and stuff like that. Um, we'd always find arrowheads and stuff like that, on, you know, on the on the walk down. But eventually you'd make it down to the lake. Yeah. And then you can hang hang down at the lake and then, you know, kind of like scurry yourself back up scurry yourself back up. But uh, even in the winter, we would grab skis and we'd ski down this bank and yeah, I mean, we were just like always wiling out, you know, down yeah. in, in, in nature. So for you then, having grown up kind of in a pretty natural environment and having that be a big part of your, your like foundational experiences as a human being, how do you stay grounded when you're on the road? Because I mean, just with what I've seen with the movement, you guys do incredible tours and you go all over the place. Like what are what are some of the ways that you stay grounded between shows, before shows and um, things like that? I mean, luckily, our crew is is very uh, drawn to nature, uh, you know, Josh, especially. I know you've talked mm. with Josh before, but yeah, we're always seeking it out on days off on the road. We're like, where's the closest national park? Where do we like stop where we can go take a cool hike, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then in the times where we are in the cities, which is, you know, for the shows, the most part we are in the cities. For me, I'm always like just taking some adventure, finding like the city park, um, get, finding like some green space within the city, hanging out, you know, like doing some stretching, doing some yoga, maybe meditating for a little bit. Yeah. You know, those are things that like I always seek out when I'm on the road because I feel like it, it energizes me. It gives me some peace. It gives me a sense of adventure. Um, I love exploring. So, you know, anytime I get to like just like have some time in the day to go do something, most of the time I'm just strapping my shoes on and and getting lost, you know, yeah. turning yeah. my G GPS on when I need to find my way back to the venue. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So what, uh, like, talk to me about, your family uh, and how it's, what it's like being a traveling musician, raising kids, being a partner, like how does, how is all that working and how do you find the balance there? It's a wild balance. <laughs> like for anyone to tell you that being a touring musician and balancing home life is easy, they'd be, yeah, Not I mean, weird. I'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> tell me your secret. Cause yeah. I don't know. I'm taking it's notes. A, yeah, yeah, please, please. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's so crazy. Um, it's I think I'm really lucky in that I have I'm surrounded by people who I think get me as a human being and and it's funny, we're all born with like certain characteristics or traits or maybe identities. And and as we get older, I think those get a little more concrete. And um and I think for me, it's like I've realized, okay, I I was put on this planet with certain talents or gifts that like for me to deny those at this point is like not only doing disservice to like you know all the people I get to hopefully put smiles on faces but like you know it's also it's also like it would be stripping me of my own uh value and and worth and and like chutzpah you know like yeah. like what what like gets me going and brings a smile on my face because when I go on tour and I'm out there and we're playing shows and I'm like, the exchange of energy is so magical. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's my favorite thing. And really like for music for me at this point, it, it, I think it's always evolved in, in different things. You know, at first it was like this, a, more of an internal search and music was a way for me to kind of understand myself or explore feelings or things like that. At this point in my life, I really feel like music is, is represent, you know, representative of therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, where like when I'm interacting with an audience, it's that's that's church to me. That yeah. is like the holiest moment that I get to feel on this planet where like I see people losing any sense of like doubt or, you know, or turmoil or whatever. And this, people are just like lit up and they're not thinking about anything, but they're being human. They're connecting to their spirit they're connecting to the spirits around them yeah and everyone just gets like it's it's a moment of elation and joy and those are the moments that like we all need is is humans on this planet because there is so much suffering there is so much like to overcome i don't care how good you have it like life is hard you yeah. know life is difficult so to share that moment and to encourage people to live that and hopefully like be able to reflect back on those moments i think is like such uh uh, I, yeah, it's such a blessing, you know, it it's really such a is. gift. And, and I know how important it is, not only for myself, but more importantly, for everyone else, like, you know, people who connect to the movements music or any other, you know, project that I'm a part of, I realize the power of music and, and what it does to people. And my family sees it, you know? Yeah. So when, you know, my partner, you know, she's incredible. And she grew up in a very, like alternative family lived on more or less like a, like a hippie commune Yeah, uh, out, out in the middle of nowhere. Her, her father was like a OG Santa Cruz hippie that like moved to upstate New York and like bought this huge plot of land with a farm on it. And I love like, it. I, I don't know all the stories, but like, I just picture at times there being like 20 people living on this land and everyone just sort of like living off the land and, you know, rebelling a bit against society and government and the structures that have confined us. Yes. Um, so, you know, she grew up going to all these fun, funky parties in the woods where it was music and dancing and she's a, a huge dancer. And uh, and so she uh, she fully embraces and understands the spirit of music. Yeah. Um, and my kids have just from the time they were born till now and my you know i have two sons and they're 12 and 13 years old they've always they've always known me to like it's like my work you know that yeah. it's like it's dad's going to work dad's going to work and i've talked to them so many times you know to like reassure them that like how much i miss them and yeah. how tough it is to balance the thing but how you know also what i just explained to you with the power of music and and what it can do for people and to let them know that like I'm trying to help people as well. So this isn't like just a selfish endeavor where I'm out there like looking out to like be seen or whatever, right. you know, like some egotistical adventure. It's like, it doesn't represent that at all for me. Um, so yeah, I think my kids, they understand it as much as they can at the, the age that they are. And, you know, at this point, now that they're older, it's like they're, you know, I try and take them to as many of these things as I can. Um, took them to Mexico for closer to the sun last year. Nice. They thought that was like the coolest thing on the planet. <laughs> like, oh, dad's job is a party. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know if they cared anything about the music, but the yeah. the skate park that they found down there, they were like they couldn't get enough of like, in the it. Like when we were at Fiddler's Green last week, last week, mm-hmm. week before, I can't even remember. Yeah, I think it was um, like yeah. Yeah, it was so cool to see Kyle's kids and yeah. like just I could like they were chucking fruit like I caught fruit snacks I was like they, like these <laughs> kids oh my god it just brought like and I I hadn't seen stupid live in so long I was like and this is why I love seeing stupid play live like ev- like the music all of it's on stage like it's so good and then just to see the twins I was like oh my god I it's like it that's what I love about this genre in particular like I've been a fan of music and other genres but I haven't ever experience like the family vibe that is so like it's integral to the this this scene in particular and that's kind of how we got into it like when you were talking about how music is healing and like the 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 careless but not carelessness but like being there for that purpose one like we all have so much more in common than we do differences but like the world and the structures that confine us are like really centered around the differences but like we're so much more alike than we are different and like when we're like at red rocks last week like at the end josh does his talk and then you play the return and then you play siren and i was like yeah like we are like this is one we need this like everybody needs this and two like just to feel like in between acts at at red rocks in particular it was like really chaotic energy that felt like it was all out here And then you guys took the stage and it just sucked everybody in and like Mm. to be aware of that energy shift and then to like witness it with thousands of people is, is exactly what you said. And like, I love that your partner recognizes that. I love that your kids recognize that. And I, and I assume that you wouldn't be with somebody who didn't get that, but what a blessing to have such a deep understanding and connection to it and be surrounded by people with that as well like makes life so much more fun and valuable yeah it's so true <clears throat> um so one of the things i was thinking of like for me i'm a writer i wrote a book all i don't know if you know this but like but the soundtrack for my book was ways of the world like i had it on repeat oh, wow. i wrote my book in a week I would turn it on. Amazing. Yeah. Like, so I had, I had gone around the country. I had like delivered the talk that I did a speaking tour before a book tour. I thought it was the other way around, but whatever I do things backwards. Um, so <laughs> nice. I delivered the talk like 40 times. And then I came back to, um, a house that we were staying at and I sat down and I put on ways of the world. And then I just like, I've never dropped into flow state with music. That's not like solfeggio frequencies so mm. fast. And so I just like would get in and then I just write. And so like, for me, from like 2015, 2016 to early 2018, I was like a consumer of the music and a consumer of a lot of things. And then like a switch flipped and I was like, I'd like to create now. And I did. And so I'm curious, do you, do you find yourself going through phases in that way in your creative process and your creative journey in between albums and between tours? Like Cause when you're out there creating, like, how do you refill your cup after you're giving so much of that energy? And there is that exchange, but it does, I, I know from experience, like it takes a lot of energy to bring that energy. So how mm. do you refill your cup? And what is, what is your like flow like between tours, between album releases and stuff like that? Yeah, it's such a good question. Cause the flows and it's so intense mm-hmm. and, and I don't think people realize. Channeled, honestly. Yeah, 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 it really is wild. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy to think like my energy states in in how they exist. And it really is like, I don't know. It I'm I'm very far from being like a, a bipolar person or something like that. Like right. I don't, I'm lucky I don't experience like really deep depression and things like that, but I do experience like real lulls in energy. Um, and it's it's due to those cycles of things, mm-hmm. you know, to like play at Fiddler's Green and Red Rocks, for example, this past weekend. And like- Monday, Tuesday, ma- Wednesday, you're like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, like leading up to it, you're, it's almost like, I, I picture it like what a, a fighter going into a ring would be doing, like preparing. And it's yeah. like, you know, it's far from that. I'm not like going 10, 10 rounds and, you know, like the physical exhaustion <laughs> of that. But there is like a similar mentality. And I grew up as an athlete and, and it's a, a, the same thing. 
you know, you'd pr- prepare for like a soccer game or, or some important match or uh, like I was a ski racer back back in the day. And, you know, like everything like leading up to the moment of that performance is is like you're conserving every last bit of energy mm-hmm. to then be able to like put every last piece of focus and energy and joy and whatever you can into that minute moment. And that happens. And like, I just noticed myself, like for me recently, meditation has been the thing that has been the grounding point um, where I feel like when my energy is sort of settled and, and, and calm um, that I'm like preserving it in a way where like, I know it's about to, to come. Right. And like, I'm like not summoning it yet, but I'm like, just storing, storing it. Yeah. (laughs) Cultivating it. And then a lot of times, you know, honestly, after like big shows like that or a big tour, if we're on a two week tour or something like that, I'll come home and I'll feel really great. I'll have like the residual joy and energy that I got from all those performances. And I'll take that with me, but it, it'll feel like, um, like I just got out of a sauna that I sat in for way too long, you know, where I'm just like, I'm like, I feel really good, but like my body just is like a little sluggish. Yeah. Like I, I don't, you know, and it's hard because it, going back to like the family life and things like that, I come home, I've just missed my family for two weeks and everyone like me, especially I'm excited to see everyone. They're excited to see me, but I don't get like a two week recovery. I don't get a two day to recovery. Like most of the time, you know, I might take a red eye flight back home from California, get home at noon and pick my kids up at school at two. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's like the reality of my yeah. life. So, so I have to be able to manage my energy. Like I have to not and you know, even being on the road, like there's just so many things to be able to balance that nature is such a big one. Like, mm-hmm. like we were talking about earlier, finding a park, finding, you know, hikes on the day off. A lot of times, like I'll go jogging, even if I'm in the city, like just like cruise around um, just to like get fresh air into my lungs, because anytime you're doing any of those exercises or or some yoga, we've been jumping rope a little on the road, like any of these things. um, It just like it gets the blood going it oxygenates everything in your body. It gets the endorphins happening. And I think like for a maintenance standpoint, it's so crucial, you know, Mm -hmm. it's so wild. Like we all probably fight that thing where it's like, oh, I'm tired. Let me lay on the couch. Right. (coughs) But the reality is like that sedentary life where you're dormant is like, you're, you're doing the opposite. You're not, you're not refilling your cup. You're, you're sort of just like sinking deeper down into your fatigue and your exhaustion. So a lot of times for me, when I need to refill my cup, I try and push myself to be like, okay, you know, what does it, you know, getting out and taking a hike, does it, you know, like, jumping into that brisk cold lake is going to do it. You know, you know that like, like jumping on your mountain bike and like going cruising with the kids is going to do it. Even if you're tired, you know, by the time you get out there, it's like that, you know, like that, like fear, you know, I've always pictured it like you're standing on the edge of the diving board and you're looking into a cold thing of water and you're like, you're like, oh man, all the thoughts going through your head. You're like, I don't know. I don't really want to do this. But like, as soon as you jump in, you're like, ah, you know, like everything releases. You feel like- Life is good. <laughs> yeah, life is good. You release your anxiety. Everything's fine. Um, so for me, yeah, like refilling the cup to me is a lot of times, a lot of times like refueling my energy uh, with things like that. Like getting out, getting active, trying to exercise more, trying to like get in the forest. For me, the forest in Mm. particular is like very rejuvenating. And I grew up, you know, in the woods more or less. There's something magical about the trees and there's something magical about like connecting to the animals that are like cruising through the forest and, and seeing, you know, like all the subtleties of life and in the moss and the mushrooms and the, you know, like all the, yeah, all the beautiful things that are happening there. And that really like, that fills me up. Um, on a musical tip, it's it's very strange. And every artist I think taps into different things when they're trying to like find inspiration for music. Um, for me, I have a really interesting relationship to music and that I don't listen to much music. Mm. Um, it's almost as if, 
the music I'm working on is, is so consuming and so intense that like that bucket's full. Like I don't I have- relate to that because I don't read a lot and I'm a writer. Yeah. I yeah. Just, I like, I, it's, it's weird. And, and, and originally I, the language that I had for it, which never really felt like my true story, but like was the closest thing I could think of was like, I didn't want to be influenced by, cause like I am extra sensitive to energy. I'm extra sensitive to people's needs and thoughts. And I mimic what I find attractive. And I think mm-hmm. that's a natural human trait. Like that's how language works. Um, but for me, I was like, you know, I think it's like, I don't want, I don't want to have, I don't want to accidentally. And I, I don't remember who said this. I feel like Mike Pinto might've said the same kind of thing, but like he does somebody, I, I can't remember if it was Mike or not or somebody else, but they were like, I don't listen to a lot of music because I don't want influences to come into unknowingly. Cause like, I'll hear something randomly. And then that, that baseline or that guitar riff might work its way into what I'm creating. And I think I feel the same way about writing. Like I, I'm trying to find the words to describe my experience, not necessarily. And like, I find help in finding language for that by like reading other things. But where I find the inspiration for me is like connecting the dots between the nature, the experience I'm having and like trying to find the words that humans can understand to like put to those feelings. Um, so I, I feel that like deeply. And that's interesting because you're not the first musician I've heard that has said that. That's really cool. Yeah, it is interesting. And it's not like yeah. a forced thing. I'm not yeah. like, like actively no music. Like, yeah. No music. <laughs> like kids turn that off, you know, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, and then, you know, obviously like you'll hear things along the way, like you'll be on the road and someone's like, yo, did you hear the new coffee track? Or did you hear the new blah, 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 you know? And, and you're like, no. Nah. And then someone will bump something and, you know, maybe you'll like, find some inspiration off of that for me a lot of times like the inspiration in music is is like the 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 feeling of it Mm -hmm. I'm personally not like uh I'm not I don't connect to music lyrically which is so strange I realized that like like 95 percent of people out there probably 99 percent of people out there are just following the story right and and the music part of it the bed of music really is like the grounds to like helping feel the emotion of the story that's being told um but for me i'm like i'm hearing it all is like this this one piece of the lyrics music. are part are an instrument in the song like it's a part yeah, of it they're yeah they're singing a melody they're they're like adding emotion they're adding either like a calmness or a smoothness or a sexiness or like a aggression or whatever yeah. it is um and you know i'm following those lyrics somewhat but for me the muse the emotion of the music is what captivates me so like certain things in certain songs like it's just a feeling and a lot of times like that feeling for me is like where does it make my body you know yeah where, where does it make my body it? move yeah, yeah or 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 like am all of a sudden like like i'm like got this joyous sort of smile on my face and the mood is just light and it's happening and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> Like I could care less what this guy's saying. The vibe's like amazing right now. You and my husband are the same. Cause I like, I, my, when I was younger, I was like, give me the liner notes. I want to read the lyrics. I listen. Like, that's how I do it. And after my hike in 2018, that like changed my life. I came home and I listened to every single stick figure song from start to finish the entire catalog and read every lyric because my thought was I couldn't find the words to articulate like what I had experienced on that Island, but the music, I could feel it. And the Mm. lyrics represented the story. So I figured if nobody's going to go hike and if they never have this same physical experience in this place with these trees and this island, whatever, if they listen to this playlist, they'll understand the journey. And so my husband is the same way because I'm like, I I am a lyric. Uh, Of course I am. I love writing. Like I love lyrics. I love words. But like this genre is what got me into the feeling part of the music. And then my husband's like, yeah, I don't know the words and stuff. I just feel the music. And I was like, who are you? You interesting alien. Like, you don't know the words. Like I'm obsessed with these words. These words yeah. are like speaking directly to my soul. Like, yeah, how, do yeah. you not, how do you not know the words? He's like, no, man, I just feel it. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, so it's you said, it, you said it was like 95% of people read it and like the other, or some loose statistic, but like majority of people are lyric readers versus feelers. 
I just got to imagine it's that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's not. Maybe maybe it's 50-50, but I got to- I would love like, to know. I'm going to, I wonder if there's been research on that. That would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah. if you find out, let me know. I, I would love to know let too. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know- okay. Yeah, yeah no, I think, go ahead. I think, Keep going. I think most people are connecting to the story because, you know, like we communicate over language and, and music is such a beautiful combination of using poetry and language, but also like using these sonics to like make you feel the language. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think most I people it. are probably probably on the lyric side of things. <laughs> so um, what in the in the grand scheme of Matt Goodwin's life, whether that's music personally like with your kids and your partner other things that you have going on like what in this moment right here at whatever time on June 16th 2022 what is like your ultimate vision for your life and like how are you moving towards that what does that look like like do you and or do you do you have one like you seem like a kind of present in the moment kind of guy maybe that isn't a thing for you but if it is I'd be curious to know what it is yeah, I'm always reevaluating. You know, I think we have these chapters in our lives where where something is of utmost importance. And then seven years later, you're like, wow, like, like that means hardly anything to me anymore. <laughs> you know, um, so I'm always trying to, yeah, be in the moment, be like, where where am I at in this current adventure in my life? Um, one of the yeah, some like major milestones that are happening right now. One, we just finished uh, the new movement record. It just got mastered. We got the finals back. I've listened to it. I can't tell you how many times. Most of it was mixed and produced right here in this room in my house, which is wild. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's so cool. Um, yeah, and it was just out of like necessity because of COVID. I was like mm -hmm. stuck in my house with my family and I was like, okay, we got to keep working. We got to keep creating art, you know, yeah. got to keep doing this thing. Um, so for that, like the movement in this project in particular has like brought me such great joy and like it, it's constantly inspiring me to like push farther, go deeper into my own self, try and think of like what else we can do to help the community, to help people. And it, it feels like uh, the, the sky is the limit is, yeah. is all of life is, right? Yes. But I do feel very inspired in the moment to like try and take all of the energy and the momentum that we've been feeling as a band and and like continue growing that but like i would love to see where we start doing more things that are like specifically targeted to helping you know nonprofits or helping so you know i have like yeah. it's weird i have some ideas for like how, <laughs> how we could like make the world a better place together that's so interesting i love hearing that that's a goal continue yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely cool. We'll have to keep talking about all the things. But, you know, the reality is like, it's it's mind boggling to me to understand why people get born into the places that they are. Like the inequality that happens into the world. It's so unjust. It's so unfair. It's, it's um, yeah, it's mind blowing, you know, mm -hmm. especially like, you know, the trips that I took to Africa and to India. It was a while ago at this point. That was like in 2002 and 2003. But the the feelings of um, astonishment at the level of poverty and the amount of suffering and the people who didn't have access to clean water or legit food or a roof over their head, like that's never left me. I've always been like, wow, like, mm -hmm. what do you do? And, and, you know, we all get caught in our own like survival or like in the American standpoint of like, I feel Achieving. like it's always like yeah it's always like accumulating yeah accumulating it's like okay well you got to here on the ladder like the only place to go is to focus on going up and up and up and up and up but it's like okay well at what point are, is it just like like pointless like what mm -hmm. you know at what point are you like okay what my accumulation of these things is means nothing because like at the end of the day I'm going to end up in the dirt just like everyone else like why not help some people along the way to live a life that's like a little more joyous like to yeah. reduce people's suffering and there's so many ways to do that you know like in like I said before music is such a thing that I feel mm -hmm. like that's like a gift that I can give the world that I hope like people who are struggling in moments of their life can maybe hear a song or hear a lyric that's coming out of uh this project that gives them hope that makes them think like oh no I am strong I can get over this this is just like an ebb and flow in a chapter of life that I know like 
when this door closes this, you know, I have the opportunity to walk through this door and, and go into a higher place. But yeah, I really want to continue seeking out opportunities uh, that can take whatever goodness we've accumulated as a group of musicians and, and try and impact people in a positive way and try and impact the planet on a positive way. Like we, there's also so much destruction happening, uh, you know, from a carbon level to, you know, a global warming level to them, you know, government occasionally like destroying national parks and shit. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, yo, this, like, we only got one planet so far. No like, planet B that we know of. <laughs> we don't, yeah, we haven't figured that one out yet. So like, man, we got to take care of this. And, um, and it's hard. Like I was having a really like interesting discussion with a friend of mine, Alexander Falls and, and my girlfriend, Autumn and, um, and Alexander's uh, lady last night, we were just like talking about things. And he just got, he lives in Colombia. Uh, the country Colombia for um, like six months out of the year and then comes back here. Amazing, like soil painter. He takes like pigments from the earth and, and does these soil paintings. Awesome. He's like a featured artist at this world uh, art show in, in uh, Cuba coming up and amazing character. And also like just deep, deep thinker. And this is a childhood friend that I grew up with in Naples. Um, and we were just talking about the nature of uh you know, in specific, I was thinking about like, like recycling and things like this, like, and it's like such a, a wild thing, because I'm always like thinking to myself, like, wow, like we beat ourselves up so much about like our individual efforts towards like what's going on, like, how do I reduce my use of plastic? And then how, you know, how do I reduce my waste of food and, and all of these things? And for me, I always get hung up on the fact that like, there's 7 billion people on the planet, like, <laughs> almost like no matter how well I recycle and no matter how much I bring reusable containers to like the grocery store and things like that, Mm -hmm. like the plastic is still being made. Yeah. And people, and everybody else is still using it. Everyone else is still using it. And I think like when I, so when I, before, like my father was a, uh, is a travel journal or travel writer and a photojournalist. So like his specialty is cruise vacation. So we went on cruises, like uh, I've been on like 20 cruises when I started like in my childhood and I've seen like we were in Haiti after the ginormous hurricanes came through and like Royal Caribbean was a supply ship that brought clean water to the island because they didn't have any and so I've seen I've seen all this stuff but the thing like when we started touring just around the U.S. like I was thinking about this is something that blows my mind too like people that use like use uh daily contacts for an example yeah think about the trash one person can make 365 containers if they do it daily 365 containers of of contact packaging in one year one person yeah and then like when we and then i was thinking like we went and we visited like the tillamook cheese factory in oregon and they were talking about how they like each day they intake like a hundred thousand gallons of milk every day to process to make cheese and ice cream and yogurt and i'm like the cows like (laughs) what that's, yeah. that's so much milk and that's one company and they make and their cheese is everywhere and then you think about like what's available at one grocery store and you figure like a big city has probably like a hundred grocery stores times just the united states i'm like we consume and create so much waste yeah and the thing is is like and what you were where my mind went when you started talking was like yes our individual actions are important yes we can make a difference but also there's like five industries that create all of the pollution and problems right. in the world which if we like regulated them we wouldn't be having this conversation so it's like right. the dent that i'm making on the world driving my van is not the same dent that like the oil industry is making <laughs> so it's just yeah. like and i just get so, i get so fucking angry i'm like god yeah. like it's so, it, it feels <laughs> so clear to me and like the solutions are so obvious that I'm like, am I actually delusional? Do I, do I live on this planet or am I like visiting from another one? Because like, I'm looking at this world like an alien. And this is what my husband does from time to time. He's like, every once in a while, I kind of drop in. I'm like, if I was an alien and I was observing human behavior, y'all are weird. Like (laughs) we do some weird Yeah, no doubt about it. (laughs) But like, when you think about like, and that's kind of where I, when I, it all kind of comes back to like music and big gatherings for me, I was really overwhelmed at this last Red Rock show. And I hadn't been overwhelmed before. Like the first concert, the first big concert that I saw after COVID was the movement at Red Rocks last year. And I was like, 
Ooh, I needed this. I'm feeling it. Like, like, like Fiddler's Green. I was like right in front of you in that wall of speakers. All the yeah. bass just like cleared the cobwebs. Just like every <laughs> cell of my body, all all the stuff that was confusing gone. Shook it right out of myself. Like nice. I needed more than 30 minutes of a movement set in that bass to make that happen. <laughs> um, but like when I think about like looking at behavior and how how weird we are, but also how separated we are from nature. And just like how everything is exact, like we're all the same. We're the same as the trees. We're the same as the grass, but like we forget, we forget about that. When you look out at a crowd of 18,000 people at Fiddler's Green, like, it's like, we're all like little, we're like the little ants on a hill, right? Like, we're just like, we're just like a little field with like blades of grass, but like we're humans and we're, or we're like cells doing stuff like cancer cells, but hopefully not cancer cells because we're good humans, but it's just like everything, everything. Yes. (laughs) everything is like it all mimics nature because we are nature and we're not we aren't separate from it like the wave I think that's an Alan Watts quote the wave is not separate from the ocean and like I am not separate from this cabin which is not separate from the ground that it's built on like I don't know where I'm going with that but that's I just every once in a while I'm just like what are we doing yeah yeah it's so true I know, and I'm I like, we have conversations like thought. this and I'm like, okay, so I'm not crazy. Like at least yeah, one other human, me. like it's me and my <laughs> husband and Matt Goodwin agrees. Like <laughs> humans are strange. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is so wild. So, yeah, but I'm just like thinking like what efforts can be made, you know, like, hmm. do, like think smarter, not harder, work hard, smarter, not harder, whatever it is like that yeah. statement. Is. But like, yeah, I'm always like, okay, like, so how do I get beyond my own efforts? I guess is the moral of like mm-hmm. where I was going with this thing, because like to make an impact is like, wow, like my personal efforts on like driving an electric car or any of these things is like, it's great. Like, I'm not going to downplay it. Like everyone should, you know, make their own efforts and, and try, but like, how do we, how do we like make impact on, on a bigger level? So those are things that I'm thinking about that, like I'm working towards, I don't have the answers. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has the answers, but like the reggae community is a beautiful community. And like, maybe if you have enough people sharing that same sentiment, then you know, maybe things can happen on a bigger level or that's thought can spread, you know, it's like thoughts can spread like wildfire, which is, Mm -hmm. which is great. And it's like a cool idea, but it's, it's so tough because like the, the world is so polarizing and sometimes to like say anything feels like you're just asking to be criticized. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm super open-minded. I'm down to sit there and listen to anyone's view on the world. I think everyone's like opposite views are what makes the world interesting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously some of them don't resonate with me and some of them like really are like hitting home. (laughs) But like, I think we need to be willing to have like the conversations with people, even in uncomfortable moments and hear people out. And, and then like, you know, try and open up and like, be like, well, how do we all work together? Even when we're not feeling certain things like Mm -hmm. for, for moments, like, you know, the planet and the earth and like making sure our kids have clean water and you know the things that we need to survive and the things that we need our planet to like remain and stay healthy so those are like some things that i'm thinking of there's another project that literally is like happening right now there's a uh there's a piece of land and i grew up skiing with a a friend of mine his name's justin and he's like an incredible like intelligent brilliant cat um and we've always kept in touch he's an amazing trumpet player and he lives here in rochester and he's like kind of dove in on like recording studio projects with me where he's like helped me create uh, recording spaces before and um, like acquire equipment and things like this to like, you know, create on a bigger level. Um, and the project that we're working on right now is he's he owns this piece of land. It was his father's land, but it's like 17 acres of land on this beautiful hillside overlooking the the south end of the lake that I grew up on and we're talking about building uh, a recording studio on this land overlooking the lake um but I think the idea is to like make it's like well the world doesn't need another recording studio everyone can record right it's like I can sit here in my basement and make a record like so can a lot of people but we're like how do we make an experience for people that like want to get away that like want to connect with nature that want to have like an experience where 
yeah, it's like you can dive a little deeper. You can step away from the world as we know it. For me, the like greatest recording experiences I've ever had are when I've been into some remote place in the middle of nowhere. Like uh, the movement typically records at this place in, in rural Virginia. And it's um, it's like, you know, I don't know, 50 acre plot of land. You have to take all these wild dirt roads to get there. Nice. And then you, take, you go down this driveway. It's like, he's got a whole bunch of goats over here hanging out in the, in the pen. And then there's like this big barn and you just like stock the fridge with a bunch of food and you stay right there in the, in the barn that is the studio. The upstairs is all places for like you to sleep. And you, you know, we will go there for a week or two weeks and like, no, like there's no, I don't even think there's cell reception out there. It's like, yeah. you're, you're just out. You're done. The time you're doesn't like, exist. It's all in this barn. The yeah, you, hides the magic. You, get to, yeah. you get to release all of like your worries about doing this and doing that. You're just like, hey, everyone, family, social media world, everyone, like I'm out for the next two weeks. We're just going to pour our energy into creating something beautiful. And that's the intention with the space here is like, let's make a space where people can get away and and have an amazing experience. And obviously, like, you know, because we're in the music thing, the recording thing is like, you know, maybe our initial primary focus of it. But I see it like that space being used for so many things. You mm -hmm. know, I want it to be a gathering space for whoever, like who wants who wants to gather on some therapeutic uh, endeavor or, you know, like maybe it's like uh, bringing speakers in who are, are sharing knowledge and information that like should be shared with the world yeah. or, you know, and then he's got like a little plot of land down below that piece, which is on the lake. So I'm like, oh man, yeah, we can get people out on the lake. We can get people swimming. We can get people in kayaks. Um, yeah. So that's like, uh, a vision for it but like I just like you know I like wild and in whimsical and and all this stuff so I like I picture you know there being like little yurts like scattered around the property and all these cool little trails connecting it and like funky little tree houses and like you know like yes. it just being like <laughs> a world outside of a place that you would think is like normal like yeah. You know, I want that spot to be the spot that like the aliens are like, whoa, that shit's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or they're like, these humans get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, they got it. Finally, we found our people. Yeah, we found them. <laughs> <laughs> they're in this weird oh. little plot, like overlooking Canadago Lake. Oh, my God. But, uh, I love that vision so much. Like, I, I yeah. feel it. I feel it for you. And I'm very excited to visit someday. And like, yeah, be like, remember on that podcast? however long ago <laughs> yeah 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 so that's like a, a a current dream you know going back to the original thought of like what what am I walking towards what am I like what's exciting me in the world and things like that so for me it's yeah it's sharing like deeper connections with humans I think with social media these days it's like it's brought us closer together and being able to connect with people and it's also like tore us apart from the human connection of like getting up in person and like spending time and not like just thumbing through a whole bunch of shit and yeah. we're all like i'm a victim of it like we're all victims of it yeah. it's weird because it's like built into our business in a mm -hmm. weird way it's hard like, for us to separate and i like my my zone my work my everything is the opposite of how i have to promote it yeah <laughs> like, yeah i want to be so far removed from social and like computer connections like it's important to get the word out that's how people find us but also like I, there is nothing this like nowadays, especially after being in quarantine and like not being able to do live events for a while. The one thing that I hate more than anything is sitting in a room full of people doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> we are right here. Like there is energy to be exchanged in yeah. real time. Like I am like in your cells. I am in your orbit. There ain't nothing here that's more important than this right here. Like, this is what I'm here for is like genuine connection, awesome conversations. And just like, I want to be like, I, I turned 37 on Friday at Fiddler's Green and my, like my takeaway between Cali roots and my Colorado weekend is like, I'm not doing anything that doesn't bring me joy or expand my consciousness. That's my, my purpose on this planet is to be present. Yeah. Whatever that means. And nice. I, and that's my filter now. And those are my guiding lights. Like 
I have a vision. I'd either like to partner with a place like this or build something like what you're building. Like, I think the, the vibe that I'm finding and the people that I'm surrounded with is we all want to live communally. We all want to create experiences yeah. where people can get back home to themselves. And like this original vision that I had where it was just a name and I was like, oh, I'm hiking my feelings instead of eating and drinking my feelings. Like that's interesting. And mm. now it's my book and it's this community and it's this nonprofit and it's the retreats we host and it's the conversations we have. And it's, it's this little itty bitty tiny seed is now all of these things. And like, I think that the same could be said with the music is like, for like the, the journey of like a song from start to finish. Like I, I have had the distinct privilege of like heal it k bongs one of k bong songs on his last album yeah. you know, with mike love the first time i heard it was right after he wrote it on catalina island and we were in the forest and he was playing it and like i, I heard a deer walked by and he's like playing for the deer playing for me and barry and he like he was still working on, like he didn't have a third verse yet he was like kind of fumbling around on the second one and then the next backpacking trip we heard, it was the instrumentation that Nathan did for Ayaterra. And then the next nice. one we heard was like fully produced without a third verse. And then the next time I heard it was when it was released and I was hiking across the state of Michigan. And I was like, okay, I got a K-Bong album. Like, this is, this is awesome. Yeah. And then, and then the next time I heard it was around the campfire at one of our retreats. And then the next time I heard it was around the campfire with one of our retreats with Derek, Man of the Forest, playing violin. Yeah. And it took that song to another space and time. I call it scraping my heart. Like that violin just like takes yeah. the cobwebs and gets everything out of here. But to be able to witness that one, I, I want to create experiences where people are part of that process from start to finish. Even if you're not a musician, just to be able to witness it, because what I have learned and emulated from our friends that are musicians into how we do things at hiking my feelings has radically changed how I live my life how mm. I find inspiration, how I consume versus how I create and like my awareness around my phases. Like it is radically changed everything. And like, I mean, I sing along to the songs, but like, I, I wouldn't, nobody's offering me a contract anytime soon. Like I don't like, <laughs> like it, but it's like, but it's fun and it feels good. And I think that yeah. there's so much as a fan. And this is one of the questions that I had for you. Like when it comes to managing your energy and refilling your cup and stuff like that, like for me at Red Rocks, like I, we went on tour with K-Bong last year. We've been hosting a lot of great retreats. Like we're really connected with like the Six Sisters group, which is part of like a, a little part of the bigger like stick figure family. And then like movement junkies and all these fan groups, like we're involved in that. And a lot of people that come from our programs are from that. And I wasn't counting, like I understand, like I should have thought about it, but like I got recognized at Red Rocks more than I had anticipated. And mm. it was like, it was borderline overwhelming. And now yeah. that we're all coming back together and especially for stick sisters, like there's a woman named Elise that run, that's an admin for the group. And some of these other people, like they're getting recognized at shows too. And it's almost like, it's, it's kind of like, oh, this must be what the guys feel like. Like when they get mm. stopped and you're like, oh my God, your music means so much to me. Somebody's like, oh my God, your book changed my life. And I was like, I mean, like I wrote it for myself with the intent of like sharing the message but like to actually have somebody like, not just like write a comment or leave a review, but like in your face telling you the impact you've made, like yeah. how, how, how do you, how do you prepare for that? Like, do you have any words of wisdom for some of the folks in the community that aren't the musicians, but are like becoming more and more active to help promote the music and like build this community around it? Do you have any advice for people that aren't used to being like recognized in public and how, how to like, navigate those situations because like how do you get away from the drunk guy that's spitting in your face like we've all been there like oh the yeah, show, yeah like yeah. at the merch move there's the dude like he's like there's spittle everywhere <laughs> like how, how do you how do you navigate that like the, the easy conversations are easy to navigate but on the harder side of things like any tips for folks like how do you how do you do it it's tricky yeah i mean you gotta uh, you know in every little situation and interactions its own little island right for sure you, you know um, for me, like I, I always love the human connection and the interaction. So like, I will always make time to say what up to someone, you yeah. know, if someone's like excited to like say, Hey, and like, you know, chat for a second, I'm there to chat, you yeah. know, but you know, like, like all things you also have to, you just have to like respect where you're at, you know? Yeah. It's like, if at that moment, like literally it's my last chance to call my kids before they go to bed you know, I'll just say, you're not hanging out in the crowd. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, I'll just, well, or if I'm talking to someone, I'll be like, oh my gosh, it was so nice to talk to you. Like, let's catch up soon. I got to call my kids real quick. I'll just be honest with them, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can play it off however you want, you know, yeah. like you can take the fake phone call and be like, oh my gosh, hold on up, you know, and like, I mean, you do whatever you want. You I, know? I'm a horrible liar. I like the <laughs> yeah. idea of just being like, this is like, I'll just be like, it was really great to meet you. I'm also extremely overstimulated and overwhelmed. So thank you. Next yeah, time, yeah, like, I'll be yeah. better prepared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I think I like honesty, honesty is, is a good is, way to go. Yeah, it's is great. You know, yeah, it's it's tough, though. And like different people deal with it in different ways. You know, Josh, for example, you know, I think he gets obviously hit up more than than anyone because lyrically his message has has impacted a lot of people. And, yeah. um, you know, and sadly, I feel like he's had to remove a little bit from like like being out and about in those situations where we're, we're playing a show that day or something like yeah. that, because like it is a lot of energy to perform. It's a lot of energy to like, you know, even like human interactions, like that little like thing to be on, right. To like, mm -hmm. be like mentally sharp and to like be sparring with words back and forth. And, you know, it's like, it takes energy. It's yeah. a lot of energy. So I don't think there's anything wrong with like, you know, respecting where you're at with your own energy. And, and if you're feeling tapped and tanked, you know, it's fine. It's completely fine to be honest with someone and be like, Oh, you know, I appreciate it so much. My night's kind of winding down. Like I got to get back to, yeah. you know, rest and save up some energy for the next one, or I'm heading home or I'm hungry. Yeah. I need some food or whatever. You know, it's, it's, I think honesty is, is great. If someone can't respect you being honest with them in, in your time, then, um, maybe the conversation should end anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice way of putting it. <laughs> okay. So I have two more questions. Um, so this fall, my husband and I are going on tour with K Bong and Johnny again. And awesome. this time, um, last year I was like, Hey, Kevin, do you have a tour manager? And he was like, no, he explained all the different people that make things happen behind the scenes and like gave me like a one one on the like support team of a tour kind of thing. And I was like, cool. Um, so if you don't have one, I would think I'd be good at it. Like I'm a event wizard. I've booked and promoted two of my own tours, speaking and leading retreats and hikes around the country, different, but same. Like I'd like to be, I'm interested if you're looking for one. And so this year, like he's kind of passing off some of the duties to me and I really want to crush it. So yeah. of all, like you have been, I mean, you've toured with lots of different bands. You've been all over the world. What is like, do you have any memories of like a really impactful contribution that a tour manager made to your life to make your life easy? So all you had to worry about was like bringing your best self to the stage. Yeah. I mean, that Shout really them out kinda, if you feel appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that really nails like that thought of what a tour manager, like a really great tour manager will do. And it, oh, well, then it, good. It, so like interviews over, I nailed it. Continue. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just do that. Just do whatever it takes to do that. And like, yeah, you've got, you, you're the best tour manager on the planet. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, there's been so many great people I've worked with, you know, um, most recently Steve Donovan is a cat that's been like tour managing with the movement. And Steve has like a ton of experience in so many different realms, but like, he was like, you know, stage manager, production manager for major music festivals. And he's also worked with a lot of different fans. Um, I think what he excels at is like, is all those things that need to happen like bef before the show, you know, like if you iron out all the details and you're an organized person and you're like, Hey, we need this, this, and this, and this, and, and there's so many different like levels of it. It's like, right. maybe we, we need like, and every band is so different. So like maybe K Bong's expectation is like, Hey, we need a juice machine with fresh vegetables and whatever, like backstage every day, you know, just following up on that stuff. So that like, you're like, Hey, the guys are showing up at this time. Let's have this and this and this ready for them. Um, you know, on a grander scale is like the production side of things, which is like, that's, we're, our band is getting to the point where like, that is a, a real, um, not struggle, but like, it's, it's a lot to overcome, uh, for every show, you know, cause like we're renting lighting equipment and stuff from certain companies in certain towns and making sure they're trucking the equipment to the event and making sure it's in there in time for load in so that our lighting designer can set everything up in time to do our sound check. And, you know, it's a lot. and then <laughs> it's a lot. And then with our band, it's like, we have, um, you know, I'm in New York. Jay, our bass players in Philly, 
Josh is in South Carolina, Gary's in Florida. And then Dave, our sound guys, he's in California. We've got other guys in Boston. We've got, you know, we're all coming from different places. So just to do a tour, the logistics is a nightmare. Yeah. So I don't know if that'll be a, a, the case for you. I don't know like what this specific situation is, but like, you know, he's taking care of booking our flights, but also like booking the flights in a way that we all arrive at a similar time. So when we're renting a suburban and we're all jumping in it, people aren't sitting around waiting for like Gary, hours, who's like, yeah. like, why is Gary's flight six hours later? Like someone's got to go pick him up. Like, you know, it's all these little things. It's yeah. just like time management and being conscious of like where everyone's at. And, you know, if you're traveling all the time and, and you, I mean, you know that like, yeah, sometimes people need a break or like if it takes on the map four hours to drive to this place, well, you know, let's give it six hours and let's yeah. break halfway and take an hour hike and get some food, you know, like yes. let's make the day nice. Like let's, let's, you know, make sure everyone's hydrated and and getting some sunshine and vitamin D and getting some proper food and yes. you know, all the things. So it's just about, for me, like, it's about just living a good life when you're on the road, you know, yeah. like not and, having and it be healthy a, and not having to like succumb to the conveniences that are available. And like, it, right. it's like, it, it, you have to like, you have to be so solid in your commitment to health before you even hit the road to be able to yeah. maintain that. And then to have the support that, in, that like reinforces that commitment is huge. And I, yeah. I, I love hearing that about from your personal experience. Cause that's what I've, that's what I've witnessed with K Bong and Johnny is like, K Bong wakes up, he stretches, he has his juice, he does his thing. Like, and there's like, to be able to give space for you guys to have your routines that allow you to be the best version of yourselves on stage. Like that's my goal. So yay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just read, you know, you'll start to like understand the characters in that particular group Yeah, and you'll, you'll see what people need and what they want. And, and, you know, once you get like everyone's routine and, and thing down, it's just like helping them, helping facilitate their day, you know, yeah. making, making sure that happens. And, um, yeah, it's it can be a fun role. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's like well, you're, I hope you're, so. You're the, <laughs> I'm you're doing the, it to have a bad time. <laughs> yeah, you're you're the party planner. You know. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah. and then so my last my last question that I have for you, um, that I ask every guest that's on this show, um, in this in this uh, upcoming scenario that I'm presenting to you, you have a magic wand, and with the magic wand, you can use it on yourself, your family, the world at large. Um, you can do whatever you want with this. You can bestow information you can eliminate problematic behaviors you can wipe out an industry that's killing the planet like what would you do with your magic wand and how and who uh would benefit how who would benefit from it and how would they benefit wow mm -hmm. oh man this is a powerful wand <laughs> i know <laughs> crazy it's a i mean man i'd be waving it all over the place you know but if i only had one wish I think it would be, I don't know, to 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 bestow maybe like uh, a sense of patience and willingness to listen for everyone. I just think that there's the world is like plagued with with social issues that are happening that I feel oftentimes are like just miscommunication or. Um, or just an unwillingness to get beyond your own initial tick of like what feedback loop that you've trained yourself or like, be, you know, been like scarred inherited, into thinking, yeah. inherited. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, like the, like what I want to see on this planet is, is peace. I want to see joy. I want to see people living in harmony. Um, and I think it's possible, you know, it's like, I realize there's so many polar opposites to what happens on this planet. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to accept it for what it is because maybe that is what actually balances the earth, similar to like the positive negative poles of a magnet, you know, or yeah. the, 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 the earth itself. Yeah. But in my deepest desire is like, yeah, I don't want, I don't want people to like feel so scarred and so misunderstood to the point where they feel like, their only course of action is revenge, you know, yeah. or, or um, they feel, yeah, so belittled that they just want to be seen and they, they put a gun in their hand or something, you know, yeah. it's like 
when I think about my children, which is like, you know, anyone who has kids, it's like, that's like the, the most important thing that you could possibly do is like, how do I create a life that is like, that I would be happy for my kids to live. Mm -hmm. And when I think about like all the things that I'm worried about in their life, a lot of times it just involves like, like my fear of them interacting with like toxic situations or people mm -hmm. or, or things like that. And yeah, I just, I wish I could wave the wand and be like, Hey, I, you know, I don't care if you're far right. I don't care if you're far left, like, like sit at the same dinner table, sit mm -hmm. at the same campfire. Like, it's okay. Like it's okay to be different. It's okay to like have a different color skin. It's okay to have a different accent. It's okay to have a different religion. Like it's fine for all of these things to exist on the planet. We don't have to, you know, there, there doesn't need to be any um, infiltration of someone's thoughts or way right. of life that, that affects you on a way that you feel like you need to take repercussions on that person. Yeah. So, yeah. I think for me, it's uh, the wand. Uh, like I said, I would wave it all over the place with all kinds of different things, but I just think that that would impact the world in such a positive way that like, yeah, we would, we would be better as a planet. We'd be better as uh, coexisting as humans. We'd be better at living lives without fear. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe that's where I would start. I like it. That's a good one. And then I'll wave my magic wand and give you more wishes because your wishes are good. Um, nice. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. So uh, for folks that are interested in connecting with you, um, is there anything that you guys got coming up that we can promote and tell people about? And where can people find you if they'd like to connect? Yeah, uh, the movement in, in particular, we've got a new record coming out. It's going to drop on July 29th. There's a bunch of amazing guests on it. The record also is like, it's a real adventure. Like I think more than any other record, there was no hesitation to like, just let it be, you know? I don't think we tried to like fit it into a peg. I don't, you, we didn't try and recreate ways of the world. Yeah. You know, it's a tall order to follow up a record that is received well. You're like, wow, yeah. okay. There's a lot of pressure to like come out with something great. Um, and I think right now we just like, we're in such a good place is a group of friends and musicians that like we trusted each other to just feel free to throw ideas out and like be like, Hey, let's take it this way. And a lot of times like the, the song would just like, it would go on its own path and it would turn out to be whatever it wanted to be. It, almost like it chose itself, you know? Yeah. Um, but because of that, there's some styles on there that I think hopefully will surprise people in a pleasant way that they're like, oh, wow, there, there's some different stuff happening. Nice. Uh, it's, it's not safe. So I think for people who are like excited to like go on a new adventure with us, this record hopefully will, will be a nice place for them to like, yeah, to, to like put on some headphones and, and like go on a, a wild ride. Yay. Um, oh, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that happens on, uh, yeah, the 29th of July. That'll be just everywhere, you know, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, wherever you like to consume your media. Um, and obviously you can catch us on the road. I think the the band's website is themovementvibe.com. Movement Vibe is like all the socials as well, Instagram right. and those things. So if you're interested in seeing some music or checking some music or coming out to a show, you know, those are good places to check. Um, yeah, on a personal tip, um, you can find me at Kofi Matthew. Kofi was a K-O-F-I was a name that I was given in Ghana when I was traveling there. Oh, cool. Kofi, yeah, uh, Kofi is a, a Zodiac name, I guess you would consider it in Ghana. They, instead of like the month you're born, it's the day of the week that you're born that is a sig significance. Huh. So any man who's born on Friday is named Kofi. And if you were introducing yourself to a stranger, you would say, hey, I'm Kofi. And then if you got to know them better, you would say, Hey, I'm Kofi Matthew. You would then give them your birth name. Um, that's really neat. Yeah. So that's a name that stuck with me. I also named my eldest son after that. And the, the, my best friend from Ghana was also a Kofi. Uh, he lost both of his parents to AIDS at a very young age and raised his four brothers and sisters from the time he was 12. And is like the strongest dude I've ever met just mentally and spiritually and physically. And yeah. so, yeah. So yeah, Kofi Matthew, you can find me, you know, uh, on Instagram or whatever. And 
yeah, I think the Riot City Sound website still exists if you want to, <laughs> you know, learn about. Hopefully, I'll start putting some information on this new musical retreat recording yes. studio in the Finger Lakes <laughs> of New York that we can have some uh, fun brainstorms on how to bring people together into nature and, and Absolutely. share music and art. Yeah. So cool. Well, thank you, Matt, for joining us. Um, until next time, everybody, enjoy your life. Be kind. Lift each other up. Matt, you got any sign-offs? Oh, man. Yeah, just, I think, live, live the highest power of yourself. Like, be the greatest version of yourself every day. You know, wake up with hope in your heart and, and a smile on your face. It's hard to feel bad when you're smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw somebody sad on a jet ski. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt, thank you. And for everybody else, uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us around the virtual campfire. Sometimes we talk about heavy topics. Sometimes we tell poop stories. But regardless of what we've discussed, we always like to end the show on a high note. At the end of our live broadcasts, we invite our community to share what they're grateful for in a segment called the Group Gratitude Circle. Every week, I'm thankful for you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy life to connect with us and witness these stories of hope, healing, and inspiration in the outdoors. If you'd like to gather with us around the campfire live each week, join the Hiking My Feelings virtual campfire VIPs. If this were a legit talk show, you'd be sitting in our studio audience. We haven't been picked up by a major network yet, so for now, we gather on Zoom. Here, you can connect with the community before and after the broadcast, hang out for sound check when we have musical guests, participate in the Q&A, join in on the group gratitude circle, and be eligible to receive prizes and gifts from our sponsors, partners, and guests. Learn more and join us at hikingmyfeelings.org campfire. Don't forget to leave a review, subscribe, and share this episode with your friends, family, colleagues, and anyone else who could use a dose of community and connection. Follow us on Instagram, we're at hikingmyfeelings, and you can tag your journey with hashtag hikingmyfeelings. And if you're picking up what we're putting down and you want to be part of this movement, join the Hiking My Feelings family at family.hikingmyfeelings.org. In case nobody told you lately, you are a brilliant human who is destined to do epic things in this world. Join us next week for more stories of hope, healing, and inspiration in the outdoors. Until then, happy trails!